So this is lecture 29 in Zoo 3649 Evolutionary Genetics and we're continuing with our uh, methods of tree building. So we've now learned about, the four, in the previous lectures, we've learned about the four main ways of building trees, that is with parsimony, distance, likelihood and Bayesian. And with the last two, uh, likelihood and Bayesian, what they have common to them is that they need a model. They need a substitution model in order to um, successfully recreate the branching uh, tree-like process of branching with descent. So, uh, as you know from the previous lectures, uh, when you create or when you calculate the likelihood, uh, even if you use a Bayesian, Bayesian priors to narrow down the search, uh, for the correct tree, it still has to calculate, the analysis still has to calculate an enormous number of calculations, okay? So that is the reason why we need something called a Markov chain Monte Carlo, uh, or MCMC for short. So, and that is because there is a problem. The problem I just told you is that the best known ways of determining the probability of something, that is using maximum likelihood or Bayesian inference, well, they both need to calculate what is called a likelihood function. And you know that likelihood means calculating every single possibility of every single base pair change. As I explained to you in the maximum likelihood lecture, how do you calculate the maximum likelihood? And because of that, once you get more than a certain number of um, individuals or individual genes or genomes that you are analyzing, then the number of calculations becomes absolutely enormous, okay? You remember this table here from the last two lectures, and I've put them up in both the last two lectures, and now you're getting it for the third lecture in a row. And that's telling you as the number of sequences or individuals increases, that's that's this S number here. The number of calcul the number of possible trees, whether they're unrooted, remember unrooted, you need fewer trees, but it doesn't really matter. Once you get beyond a certain number of individuals, the number of trees involved, the number of calculations and likely maximum likelihood calculations becomes absolutely enormous. Okay? So this means that the number of possible trees is basically exponentially increasing with the number of individuals that you are analyzing in the tree okay and so this means that the parameter space becomes too large it becomes so large that it is impossible to search it within a reasonable time frame so i mean it would probably take years if not decades if not hundreds of years to actually search the tree space uh, for that many individuals. So clearly, neither maximum likelihood nor Bayesian can actually calculate the solution. So it cannot, neither likelihood nor Bayesian can actually determine the, the most likely tree. And that is because there are far too many calculations to do. Okay. And when I say too many, I mean, in orders of magnitude of, you know, the calculations are so many that would literally take years, if not be completely impossible to calculate the maximum likelihood um, from the raw data. So actually calculating the maximum likelihood. That means evaluating every single possibility. Okay, so if it becomes impossible to actually calculate the maximum likelihood for every possibility, right it means that the trees parameter tree space if you consider the number of trees that need to be calculated as the tree space uh, space with uh, in three dimensions with uh, peaks and valleys okay so um and that likelihood landscape okay is basically what the mark of what what we need to calculate and you, we need to calculate the probability at every point on that landscape okay and so in in order to fully explore the parameter tree space um, 
So how then can we use these Bayesian and likelihood methods if it is impossible to calculate a solution? How can we do it? And we do that by using a Markov chain, Monte Carlo method. Okay, So we don't actually calculate every single possibility. We don't do that because it's not possible to do. So what does the Markov chain do? It does something called heuristic sampling. Okay, so it actually samples the popular uh, the 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 prior parameter or tree space. It doesn't actually calculate every possibility. It picks and chooses certain samples and cal and calculates the likelihood for only those samples. Okay, let me explain to you how it works. Okay, so the Markov chain basically approximates the solution because the solution itself is is too difficult to actually calculate it's impossible to calculate so we need to approximate the solution all right so the markov chain is very clever okay it actually makes sure to look for the solution in that part of the parameter space where it's most likely to find the solution that's very clever so basically it doesn't bother looking for the right tree or the maximum likelihood tree in a place with low likelihood. It only wants to find places with high likelihood to search. Okay, and so how does it actually do that? Right? How does it do that? So I always say, and this is why this lecture is really popular with with every class 3649. I always say the Markov chain works like a drunk man as he's walking home from the Shabin. Okay, so you imagine a drunk man, he leaves the Shabin, he's making his way home. Okay, so imagine the Markov chain is starting to try to find the, uh, the, the maximum likelihood tree. Okay, it's try, trying to find the tree with the maximum likelihood. How does it do that? Okay, the tree with the maximum likelihood for the Markov chain, finding that tree is like the drunk man finding his home. Okay, so let's see what ha what that drunk man will do. Now, the drunk man can walk home in many directions, right? But there's only one real proper way to walk home. That means you walk home directly without bumping into other objects, avoiding dogs barking at you, trying to bite you, avoiding cars and, 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 and traffic and people and so on. So there is a way to go home, right? The right way to go home, right? But he's drunk. So he's not sure which is the right way he, because there are actually many ways he can go from the Shabin, but only one way is the right way to go home, right? So how does he find that way home? Okay, he, he takes one step from the Shabin door. He takes one step forward, right? Then he thinks about whether this place is a safe place for him and whether this new place where he is stepped onto is safer than what? than the place he, he he just left, which was the Shabin, right? If he takes a step uh, and he finds that this new place where he is stepped is safe, in other words, there's no dogs, there's no cars no, going to knock him, there's no roads in his way and so on, right? Then he forgets where he, where he was before and he remembers what? Only the new place where he is standing, okay? But let's just say if he took that first step from the Shabin and when he took that first step, he he realized I, I, I'm not safe here. OK, so in this new place, if he took the step and he realized ah, I'm right beside a car, it's going to knock me or now there's a dog there is going to bite me. Right. If he feels unsafe, what does he do? He does not step there. He's, he, you know, he steps there for a moment. And if he fi feels himself unsafe, what does he do? He steps back to where he was, to the safety of what? The Shabin, or the last place where he was, okay? And then he forgets about that step where he took, right? And he takes another step in another direction. And hopefully the new step will bring him to a safe place. And if it brings him to a safe place, then he goes back to the point before. He forgets the previous place and he only remembers the new. Okay, so then he carries on like this. Right. So by always making sure at every step he's safer than he was previously, he is going to avoid all the obstacles. It's going to take him a while, but he is surely going to avoid 
all the obstacles and he's going to eventually he's going to find his way home right so that is basically how a markov chain works it continues step by step until it finds the maximum likelihood tree in other words like the drunk man from the shabin unsure where his home is he takes one step if he continues to feel safe on the next step and the next and the next as long as he keeps feeling safer and safer and safer right so at step two he must feel safer than he felt in step one if he doesn't feel safer if he feels the same safety then he doesn't take that step he remains in step one okay so always the each step he has to feel safer in other words he's getting closer and closer to his home right with each step so that is how and if he feels that he's not getting closer to his home he's not safe he goes back to where he started from so that is what the markov chain actually does okay so the markov chain you first start the markov chain you say find the most likely tree here's a dna sequence alignment or here's some characters and their ch changes in character state please find the new uh, find um the maximum likelihood tree the best tree okay so what is what what does the markov chain do it starts in a random place all right and it takes a new state right it proposes a new state and if it's a bayesian analysis it draws from the prior distribution you've already said in the bayesian no the state the the parameters are between certain limits Okay, that's your prior distribution. So if you're doing a Bayesian analysis, it randomly draws uh, uh, values from that prior distribution. And then it subjects it to the model. It puts it into the nucleotide substitution model. And it finds out what the likelihood of this state is. Okay, the step I've taken. One step. What is my likelihood? In other words, what's the probability of this tree? All right. And so it calculates the probability and... If this probability uh, proposes, so um, he can propose a new random variable. So in other words, between zero and one for the Markov chain, right? Based on the probability of that state. So if this new value is less than what we call the acceptance probability, the new state is accepted and the state of the chain is updated. In other words, if the Markov chain um, calculates a value proposes a new state and the new state has a higher likelihood then the markov chain moves to that state and forgets about the one it's it was on before the state it was at before it's exactly the same as a drunk man taking a step and feeling safe or if he's not feeling safe going back so if if for example the new state of the markov chain is has a lower likelihood than the previous state where he was he forgets about he doesn't take the step the markov chain doesn't take the step it stays where it, where it is and then it draws another <coughs> random variable from the uh, prior distribution and then it recalculates a new state okay it keeps doing this until it finds a state that is higher in likelihood and then he can step to that place okay and then from the from that place he does it all over again he, he takes another step okay and draws another random variable from the prior distribution and then sees whether that new state has a higher likelihood than the old state okay and then he keeps going and going and going in this way so in this way the markov chain avoids looking for the solution to the problem okay in all the possible probability space okay so basically it doesn't have to calculate the probability of the entire probability for every single combination okay it only calculates the pro the probability of the new state that it is in okay and as long as that probability is getting higher and higher and higher so the likelihood of the state is getting higher and higher and higher he knows that he's always going up a likelihood peak he's going up and, he, and, if, and if you go, if the a likelihood is going up, then where are you going to get to eventually? No, you're going to get to what? The maximum likelihood, right? If you, the likelihood is keeps going up, soon you will get to the maximum likelihood. Okay. But remember, he only goes up. 
he's only looking for likelihoods that are high. Okay? If the likelihood is low for a state, he doesn't move. All right? So that way, he avoids looking everywhere for the maximum likelihood. He only looks in the places that are more, it's most likely to be found. In other words, in the places where the likelihood is going up. Okay? And I'll, let's, let's have a look. Let's have a look at this in a, <coughs> in a, um, uh, in a picture. Okay? So where is my mouse? Let me try and find my mouse. Here we go. Right. So um, as you see there, um, here, uh, you see my mouse here. The, the man is uh, uh, the Markov chain is at the bottom. It's at a so this is likelihood here on the y axis, and you see the likelihood goes up to a peak and then goes down, right? So if we start our Markov chain here, it takes a step at the new step there. Okay, the old step is here, the new step there, the likelihood is higher. So what does he do? He stays there, and then what does he do? He tries to go, he takes another step. If he, the next step is going down, he's not going to go down, is he? He's going to remain where he is. But if the next step goes higher, what does he do? He goes higher. So he never goes down. Do you see that? He always goes up and up and up. Okay? So now what happens when he gets to the top? Okay? What happens when he gets to the top, at, to the maximum? Here's the maximum likelihood, right? He's found the tree with the highest likelihood. If he takes a position this way, it's going. the likelihood is going down. So what does he do? He stays at the top. If he takes a uh, 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 if he takes a step in this direction, what happens? The likelihood goes down. So what? He, he he stays where he is. So in that way, he can always find the like the top of the peak and stay at the top of the peak. And this is basically what a Markov chain is all about. Okay. But in real life, <coughs> the probability space is not two dimensional like you saw in the last figure. It looks more like this. It mo looks more like a landscape with three dimensions okay with mountains and valleys okay so in this situation here the as you see with my mouse the top is the maximum likelihood that's where that's the state that the markov chain wants to find okay that's the that's the home of the drunk man in the shabi okay so <clears throat> what does it do look at this look at this uh, these graphs here where my mouse is he starts off with a red spot okay then he goes to the blue spot okay what happens that he's got you see there he's going upwards okay he's going upwards so what happens he remembers the blue spot okay he remembers the blue spot and then he sorry my mouse has disappeared and then he stays at the blue spot right and now and now if he goes from the blue spot to the green spot in the next step now, is the green spot higher or lower in the likelihood? Is the green spot higher or lower? The green spot is actually almost the same likelihood as the red spot, but it's definitely lower in likelihood than the blue spot. So what happens now? He does not go to the green, does he? He stays at the blue, okay? And he will only move if the likelihood goes in the upward direction, up the slope. He's not going to move from this blue place. He's not going to go down. He will never go down. Okay? So that is how the old, the, old, the old Markov chain works. Right? You start with the proposed state. You calculate the probability of the new state. If the state, the new state is higher in likelihood, in other words, better than the old state, you accept it. Okay? And then you randomly draw a number between 0 and 1, and you do it all over again move to the new state is, is accepted if not stay at the old state and start over okay in that way you always go to the higher likelihood and that is a brilliant way in which the markov chain samples heuristically the probability space it cannot doesn't calculate everything and that is how we can still use likelihood and bayesian approaches even though the solution is impossible to compute we can still use it by using this Markov chain approach. Here you see the Markov chain, what has happened to it, that it has started in a low area and you see what has happened. It is moved up this peak and it is sampled on top now. It has reached the top of the peak 
and it's moving around at the top of this peak here but it's not coming down anymore okay it's staying at the top you see most of the uh, points are concentrated at the top because what has this Markov chain done it has found the maximum likelihood okay that is what it has done that is its goal okay the Markov chain is designed to find the maximum likelihood but it does so without calculating every possibility okay what would be every possibility in this landscape every possibility will be every single square here you see these squares here where my mouse is every square they are going this way going that way and there are thousands of squares right but the markov chain does not calculate the solution for every square now nah. it calculates only in these dots where it is if it is moved and it's only calculating if the square is has a higher likelihood okay and that way it will it can avoid making all these unnecessary calculations in all these other squares and only calculate in the places that have high likelihood that is how clever the markov chain is but 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 we got we still got a problem when we use markov chains and why do we have that problem okay because biology is not simple those models that we use the nucleotide substitution models are not simple the trees that we have to the so many combinations of trees that have to be evaluated are not simple okay so the probability space doesn't normally look like this okay it doesn't have just one pick up one pick down done no the probability space looks maybe more like this okay there are some places with high likelihood and some places with low likelihood but there's more than one place with high likelihood okay so look at this curve here here's the likelihood on the y-axis and here's the parameter s estimate right <clears throat> so for example this is a place where the peak there's a peak this is a place where there's a peak and this is a place where there's a peak right where the likelihood function this is the likelihood function this line here has a peak right so the likelihood function has three peaks in this graph here. So tell me something. What is going to happen to our Markov chain? What happens to our Markov chain? Do, does our Markov chain want to be there at this peak? No, it doesn't. Does it want to be there at that peak? No, it doesn't. Where does it want to be? The Markov chain must find the maximum likelihood. And here's likelihood on the y-axis. Where's the maximum likelihood? It's here. Okay, so we cannot afford for the Markov chain to get stuck here at this likelihood. It's a local maximum. It's not the global maximum. Okay, so the global maximum is up here. Okay, we want our Markov chain, our man, to walk to the top there. We don't want him to get stuck here. We don't want him to get stuck here because here, if he gets stuck here at this point, the tree is not the right tree. The likelihood, the tree here is not the correct tree. That here is the only place where you have the correct tree. Okay, so this is what he is aiming for. But remember how the Markov chain is working. It only goes to a probability when the new state is more likely. So what happens if he's standing here? If he takes a step in this direction, where does he go? He goes low to a low likelihood. So what does he do? He wants to stay there. So then to get to a higher peak, he tries to take a step in another direction. He steps in this direction. What happens? He goes to lower likelihood. So what does he do? He doesn't want to go there. He then remains here. In other words, what has happened to him? He's getting stuck here. The Markov chain got stuck here at the local maximum. He didn't find the maximum likelihood. He found only the local maximum. Okay? He didn't find the global maximum likelihood. Okay? So that's a problem for a markov chain he could get stuck here as well and if a markov chain gets stuck here or here you got a big problem because the answer is not the correct answer okay it's the wrong answer so you see how the markov chain can also even though it's very clever it just can also make mistakes so the question is when you are doing a markov chain analysis or markov chain sampling <clears throat> uh, how do you know if the Markov chain has reached the true peak, the true maximum likelihood, the global maximum? Huh? Well, 
when all the parameter space has been implored, I explored and the true peak is found, we say that the Markov chain has converged to stationarity. In other words, it's converged to the true maximum likelihood, the global maximum likelihood. And how do we make sure that it explores the maximum likelihood of all the parameter space and doesn't get stuck? Huh? So, for example, like look at this landscape now. You see, there are several likelihood local maxima, okay? But there's only one maximum likelihood. And what has happened to this Markov chain? Has this Markov chain converged? No, it hasn't, right? Why? Because this one started going up and then what? He got stuck at the low one. That's not where the correct tree is. The correct tree is here at the maximum. He needs to get here, but he is stuck here because why? Every time he takes a step from the top, he has a lower likelihood. He goes back to the top, right? So he cannot, he cannot get out of this. So how do we how do we help our Markov chain? Yeah, how do we mar help our Markov chain? Well, if you start the Markov chain using different starting values, okay. So each red spot here, okay. So each red spot here on this new graph shows you that a different Markov chain. In other words, you run, you do, you look for the maximum likelihood by running not one Markov chain, hundreds of them at the same time. Okay. And so you look at all these red spots. That's those are the starting points of hundreds of MCMCs. Okay. In other words, you start the man off in, in from a hundred different places. Okay, so not from the same Shabin. You start him off from Shabins across the landscape to make sure that all of the, no matter where he starts, he's going to find the same home. Okay, so that's why you, you use many different Markov chains. And you see how many Markov chains we have to use here? All these red ones are different Markov chains. And what's happening? Yes, some of them go into the top here right some of them even go to the top here but eventually eventually most of them will find this one they will find the maximum likelihood okay and that's the way to help the markov chain okay to always find the maximum likelihood and with that i will leave our tree building and markov chain uh, and substitution models i will leave that uh, um, idea and in the last lecture of the section of genetic structure I want to talk to you about a very important concept and that is where the two big ideas that we've been talking about now the, what we've been talking about in this section tree building and what were we talking about in the previous section populations right those two ideas tree ideas and population ideas how do we bring those two ideas together Okay, and that's what we're going to be talking about in the next uh, lecture, lecture 30, about what we call the coalescent. Okay, I look forward to that lecture. I hope you do too.